your solutions to the second formative quiz. There were multiple versions of this quiz, so I'm just working through one of the versions here. See the um, solutions in D2L for the solutions that were to the version that you took. Um, the versions are the same, just their numbers are different. So in 1A, we're trying to evaluate f of 0. So what this means is that we're being told that with this algebraic description of the function, uh, this is telling us that when the input is t, to find the output, we apply the formula minus 4 times t plus 5. So this is telling us the letter that goes in is called t, and this is telling us the formula for the outputs. So when we write f of 0, we're saying make 0 the input. So put 0 in place of t here. So if you put 0 in place of t here, you have to put 0 in place of t everywhere you see it. So that's going to look like f of 0 is going to be minus 4 times 0 plus 5. And we know with our order of operations that this multiplication gets done first. So we have minus 4 times 0 is 0 plus 5 is 5. So we would write f of 0 equals 5. This is our answer to the question. And when we see this, that's showing us a relationship between inputs and outputs. It's saying that for the function f, when the input is 0, the output is 5. Then on the other problems, it's not here, but on other problems where we're asked about a graph of a function, we can visualize this as being that the input-output pair on the graph is 0, comma 5. So f of 0 equals 5 also tells us that if we drew a graph of this, the point 0, comma 5 would be part of the graph. Okay. Um, the second question just says find an x so that f of x equals 0. So again, we're at the x, we're trying to find x, and x is sitting here inside the parentheses, so this means it's an input. So this is saying find an input number whose output is 0. Find an input number whose output is 0. So find an input number x for which the output is 0. Now we already know that the output for this function is, it comes from performing this formula on the input. So for the output to be 0 means that 4x plus 5, or negative 4x plus 5 has to be 0. This is the formula. for the output that comes from input x. So now we're just doing an algebra problem. So I can, um, if it were me, I would probably, to do this algebra problem, um, I would probably add 4x to both sides just because I prefer adding to subtracting. Um, and then that was going to give me a 0 here. And so on the left-hand side, I'll just have 5. And on the right-hand side, I'll have 4x. And now I can divide both sides by 4. So x has to be 5 fourths. So 5 fourths is the input that goes with output 0. So I can write that down as a summary statement that the thing I wrote in blue there is the answer to the question. But what I'm finding from that is that f of 5 fourths equals 0 as a statement. So 5 fourths as the input means 0 is the output. And again, if I drew a picture of this uh, function, then I know that the point 5 fourths comma 0 will be a point on the graph for this function. All right, so the second question here is just asking us to find the equation of a line. And like I said in class, uh, finding the equation when we know the slope and a point is actually the um, most common way that um, the information comes to you in a calculus course when you need to find the equation of a line. So we practice that especially. We have learned that this is called point-slope form. So point-slope form says that I should take the slope times x minus something plus something else. And the two somethings 
come from the x and y coordinate that are given to me. So the given x is minus 1 and the given y is positive 3. So I can rewrite that y equals negative 3 fifths. Uh, usually I just don't like seeing minus minus 1. It's just hard to look at. So minus negative 1 is the same as plus 1. So this is a perfectly good answer to the question of what is the equation of this line. If in addition we need to know how to write that line in this simplified form, this y equals mx plus b form, we won't always need to do that, but when we do, we want to know we can, we can actually do the algebra to do it. That algebra is just a matter of simplifying the right-hand side of this thing that I put in the red box. To simplify it, I got to do two steps. I got to do this di distributed property through the parentheses, and then I'll have some like terms that I can combine. So the distributed property part is just going to take that minus 3 fifths times x, and then minus 3 fifths times 1. I'll make that uh, so minus 3 fifths times positive 1. I'll make that minus 3 fifths plus 3. And so I have like terms here that I can combine. These are both constants being added. So to do that, I need to find a common denominator. The uh, denominator of this term is really 1. So I can rewrite that second um, fraction. I can just get rid of this and replace instead of 3 over 1, I can make that 15 over 5. So in other words, I've taken the 3 over 1 that I had and multiplied top and bottom by 5. So 3 is the same as 15 fifths. So now I have minus 3 fifths and positive 3, or plus 15 fifths that I can simplify. So I have y equal minus 3 fifths x plus 12 fifths. One of these days I won't do that. There we go. Um, for the third problem, um, we're trying to find the graph of a line that we're looking at, and so I need to know some points on the line to do that. So I can find some points that have easy-to-read coordinates. Uh, there's three points that all hit nice whole number coordinates. I only need two points to find the equation of a line, so I only need two of these, really. So I'll be crazy if I pick the one with negative um, coordinates. We pick these two. So two comma four is this point, and six comma one is that point. The one over here has a negative first coordinate, and so I just do not have negative numbers in my in my answer or in my in my, uh, in my work if I can help it. And it's up to me. It's up to me which points I use. So our process is to find the slope. We know the slope is the change in the outputs divided by the change in the inputs, or in other words, the change in y over the change in x. I always do my denominator first so I can get them in the right order. My, um, my two x coordinates are 6 and 2, so I'll subtract them in the order that gives me a positive number for sure. And then I'll add my um, change in y coordinates to that. The y coordinate that goes with 6 is 1, and the y coordinate that goes with 2 is 4. So I just do a quick double check here. Uh, 6, 1 is the right point, and 2, 4 is the right point. So I've got my points in the same order, top and bottom. And so that'll be negative 3 over 4. And I can see that in the picture, um, if you think about counting, uh, from the picture, if you ask yourself, how do you get from one point to the next, the answer is you need to go over four, one, two, three, four, and then down three, one, two, three. So for every four you go over, you go down three. That's exactly what this slope number tells you. For the, This is the run, this is the rise. So for every four you go to the right, you've got to change your y-coordinate by negative three. In other words, go down three. So we can see that here. Every time you go over four, you go down three. Go over four, go down three. But, um, but it does come from our formula as well. And so, um, so now my point slope form, 
again has this form. And I have to fill in the blanks. And at this point, I can use either of the two uh, po uh, points that I know. And as usual, I'll just pick the one that seems easiest. I think I'll just take the two four, just since that's, I don't know. I mean, they both seem about the same. So I'll use, uh, I'll use this one. And again, I invite you to try using the other one. What will happen is it'll look different at first in point slope form. And then when you simplify it, it'll be identical to the one that I'll show you. So we know that the first coordinate, the, the X coordinate goes with the X and the Y coordinate goes at the end. So my equation is going to be minus 3 fourths X minus 2 plus 4. So that's a perfectly good answer. Y equal minus 3 fourths X minus 2 plus 4 is a perfectly good answer in point slope form. If you did want to simplify it, and this one it's not asking you to, but if you did, then all I have to do is do this distributive property and combine the like terms. So if I simplify this, it'll look like um, if I do that distributive property, I'll have minus 3 fourths times x, and then I'll have minus 3 fourths times minus 2. So a minus times a minus is a plus. 3 fourths times 2 is 3 halves. You can check that on your calculator, or you can do it with the fractions. Uh, but 3 fourths times 2 is 3 halves. And then I still have that plus 4 sitting out here at the end. So I've done my distributive property, and now I can combine the, um, the two constant numbers, the 3 halves and the 4. Remember, 4 is 8 halves, so 3 halves plus 8 halves will be 11 halves. So let me just write that. So this would be my point, my slope intercept form, and um, I could have just left it for this problem since it didn't ask me to do that. Um, I could have just left it as, well, let me get myself a box here. I could have just left it like this and had it been in point slope form. So either the blue box or the red box, they're the same, they're the same thing. Okay, and then finally, number four, um, we're trying to find intercepts. And so the definition of the intercepts are just the points where one coordinate is zero. So you just check, pick each coordinate and, and do, the, uh, do the math, do the algebra. So let's do when x equals zero. If x equals zero, the equation that you see here says minus eight times zero plus six y equals 16. And I know that any time times zero is zero. So this is the equation six y equals 16, which can be solved by just dividing both sides by six. And 16 over 6, uh, I can divide top and bottom by 2, and that's the same as 8 thirds as a simplified fraction. So therefore, the point with x coordinate 0, y coordinate 8 thirds, is one of the intercepts. Now, if you think about where that plot, where that point is, um, think about where that would be plotted on a piece of graph paper, that would be right on the y-axis. And so we know that this is called the y-intercept. So we find our intercepts, and we can name which one's which by just thinking about where it falls on the piece of graph paper. So 0, 8 third is right on the y-axis. So then we have to do the other one. Um, if the other coordinate is 0, then the equation says... Um, minus 8 times x plus 6 times 0 equals 16. And again, the 6 times 0 is just 0. So I'm solving the equation minus 8x equals 16. And I can do that by just dividing both sides of the equation by minus 8. 16 divided by minus 8 is minus 2. 
Therefore, the point that has x coordinate negative 2 and y coordinate 0 is an intercept. And again, picture where that is on a piece of graph paper, and you'll see that it's on the y axis. So, I'm sorry, on the x axis. And so this is an x intercept. So those are the two answers to the question of finding the intercepts.